so we've got a EFR6258 V-band turbine housing turbo here. Our other turbo comparison videos have been quite well received. Seems like there's quite a lot of information in those videos that's maybe not out there. So I thought we'd do another one on the 6258 with a V-band turbine housing. Open scroll. Um, so we're going to unbox it, get it out on the bench and have a look at it. So, yep, yeah, this is a 6258 with uh, an, an alloy um, supercore, which makes this really light. Doesn't feel like there's anything in this box. And that's because there's no turbine housing in here. Um, basically what's in this box is just a big chunk of aluminium. So you always get the um, kind of warranty statement. Basically what this says is, once you fit it to your car, it's nothing to do with them, unless it's a manufacturing defect, defect which ultimately seems from our experience, almost all of the turbo manufacturers won't kind of uh, admit to, even if it is a thing. It, it seems to be the same with all of them. Warranty is essentially um, you know, non-existent with these kinds of aftermarket turbos. You get like a warning, which is, you know, uh, use clean oil, connect oil prior to starting the engine, let the oil flow through the turbo, um, you know, all kind of standard turbo priming stuff. And then you get like an installation guide, which is just information on the water ports, the boost control solenoid and things like that. And then in here we have the super core. So this is what's known as a super core. So it's essentially like two thirds of a turbo. Um, what it's missing is the turbine housing. So what we've got is the compressor cover and the core with the, with the wheels on it, basically. They're usually pretty oily, that's why my hands are getting oil on them. But yeah, that is basically two thirds of a turbo. Uh, and then the other part with Borg Warners on this specific setup, this specific setup isn't a setup that they sell boxed as such. So they sell like T4 internal gate twin scroll, T4 external gate twin scroll, um, T25 internal gate, T3 internal gate, T3 external gate on the bigger ones, the B2 and the B3 frame. Um, all kind of boxed, but they don't sell any V-band V-band setups that are um, kind of boxed together. I don't know why that is. So with this one, you get turbine housing, and then you get both clamps the inlet and the outlet, which is something that they didn't used to do, but they do now. And then you get your bag of bolts, which is essentially the four core clamps, the four stainless steel bolts to go with it, and the two nickel nuts for the clamps. The reason I say V-band, V-band is because that's how the turbo manufacturers describe it. So it's basically, it's a V-band inlet and a V-band outlet. Now, again, all of the modern um, style turbos use a V-band outlet nowadays. It's pretty much the only way. So all of the Borg Warner turbine housings, B1, B2, and B3 frame, all use a V-band outlet, and it's all the same size, which is really handy for us and for you know everybody, really. It keeps things at a nice standard. And then they offer V-band inlet in the 6.2, the 6.5, no, the 6.2 and the 6.758 and the 7.163. So all of the B1 frame, smaller turbos, they offer a V-band inlet in. They don't do V-band inlet in 7.64, 76.70, 8.374, 8, 91.80, all of the bigger ones, they don't do the um, V-band inlet. It's mainly because those turbos are they either do them in a, in a kind of OEM style fit or they're just T3 or T4 twin scroll 
So realistically, um, yeah, there's no room for a V-band if you're wanting to fit to a T3 or a T4 existing setup, really. So what's unique about the EFRs as opposed to the Garrett's, which are like the next most popular ones, really, the ones we sell most of and the ones that you, you know people talk about the most outside of the kind of Japanese car market are the, um, the EFR and the, the G series or GTX. One of the cool things about the EFR series of turbos is that they do them with two different core options for almost all of the turbos. Sometimes you have to hunt around for the part numbers, but they are available. So they do an aluminium core, which is really lightweight, or uh, an iron core, which again is you know quite a lot heavier. Um, I did measure them once and it is a significant difference, but it also makes them quite a lot lighter than a Garrett. So again, if it's uh, you know a, a race car or something like that and you are chasing weight, definitely go for the aluminium one. There's no disadvantage to it as such, other than the fact that they are adamant you must water cool it with it being an aluminium turbine housing. Obviously, aluminium doesn't have the same working temperature or the grade of aluminium they're using doesn't have the same working temperature as what an iron one would. As with all of the Borg Warner EFRs, built-in recirculation valve, which you can block off if you want, and then a built-in boost control solenoid, which is a really nice feature. It's probably the nicest thing about the uh, EFR turbos, really, or one of. You know, it's a very OEM-style turbo, and in the right setup, you wouldn't know it was uh, an aftermarket turbo, really. So if we just assemble these two together and that just slots in there you would want a little bit of uh like anti-seize grease in there again these aluminium cores do tend to weld themselves together after a few heat cycles aluminium to the uh stainless steel turbine housing and then you get these core clamps so it's not the nicest way of doing it the nicest way is with the v-band but it seems to be that for whatever reason they don't want to do um, aluminium to iron or stainless steel v-band again i don't know why that is it's uh it's it's probably more to do with cost than anything the compressor covers on a v-band putting them both on a v-band it just adds more machining work it, i think it just ends up being more costly as a process to do and that's probably the reason they don't do it and realistically this is the side that you you know you, you're going to need to disassemble the least so yeah you, you just basically slot these core clamps on again a lot of oe turbos work like this you slot those core clamps on and just rotate the turbo around to a point where you can get the bolt in which is on these efrs is nicely between the uh, two coolant ports and you can just thread that bolt in again it's like stainless steel hardware so it's all nice stainless steel turbine housing stainless steel clamps stainless steel bolts again you'd want to thread lock these you can get high temperature thread lock it's better than nothing um, you do tend to hear quite a lot of stories of people having issues with core clamps rattling themselves loose and things like that i think that tends to be a lot of the time more to do with um bracing of the turbo vibration and things like that again it's a yeah there's always going to be these kinds of uh, difficulties on aftermarket parts you know again they are designed down to a price as you know as frustrating as that can be at times um, you know they, they do only build them to be so expensive so yeah things like v-bands on the here would be a lot nicer it's a lot less likely to rattle loose but yeah we have to make do with core clamps and bolts okay so that's like a, an assembled turbo now really that is kind of the three major components of a turbo um, all kind of bolted together again things we've covered in the past with these EFR turbos they are just a very nice OEM fit and finish um, you tend to find a lot less casting imperfections on these than with some of the others Garrett's um, so the, the v-band on the compressor cover is a really nice feature they're pre-drilled for a speed sensor port so all you have to do is basically just knock that hole through with a drill bit and you can pop your speed sensor port in there coolant ports on both sides of the core so you can run the 
the coolant in loads of different variations. You can kind of run it in and out the same side from the top to the bottom, however you want to do it. Built in oil feed restrictor. Again, that's something that in the past, you know, you've kind of had to do that yourself or, or figure out what you need. Um, so that's just a dash four line that will just go straight on there, which is nice and handy. And then the turbo oil return is pre-drilled for M8 with a standard hole spacing. So this will suit yeah, your Garrett, your Borg Warner type um, turbo oil returns. So again, that's really easy. These have been around years now. Um, you know, all the information's out there on these pretty much. They're tried, they're tested. They're still one of the best turbos you can get. Um, the G series are obviously a newer, a lot newer turbo now. Um, and they are showing some kind of features that, you know, are different to the EFR, but I still don't necessarily think one's any better than the other. There's still a lot of um, kind of things you kind of combine or change about both of them in an ideal world. So yeah, if there's anything else you wanna know about these EFRs, anything else we can cover in a future video, uh, please just let us know, put it in the comments and uh, we'd be happy to answer them.